I looked out of my bedroom window one day across the river and lying in the mud on the other side of the river was the most beautiful hull shape I, I thought I'd ever seen. <clears throat> I got on my push bike and pedalled over there and it turned out to be the hull of the pilot cutter mascot. And I sat there and thought, well, if I had any money, uh, I would rebuild this ship because obviously she used to be quite a reasonable sailing ship. And it actually took 40 years before I got round to actually doing something about it. And sailed her around the Bristol Channel for 16 years or so, I think. During which time the Cornubia came on the market and um, uh, the shipyard directors and I decided that she was a famous ship. She was then called the Herta, owned by Tom Cunliffe, very well known vessel. So we thought um, really that would be a good object for restoration. So we put an offer in um, and lo and behold at auction we, we actually we actually were successful we bought her. I started to rebuild the hull with the ship, the shipyard were doing the work of course. At which point I thought, well this is daft, I've now got two pilot cutters, you can only sell one at a time. So um, we put both on the market and fortunately Barney was able to find a customer to buy the mascot. So the money from sale of the mascot went into completing the Cornubia. Here we are today. This boat was built originally in 1911 by a boatyard in Pol Ruin, uh, Foy, uh, by uh, a company called J. Slade and Sons. And the J stood for Jane. The company was run by a lady, which in those days was quite unusual. But she had four sons, one of whom, Thomas Slade, actually built this boat. And the pilot who had this one built was a Barry pilot, uh, George. Morris and George must have seen this earlier boat sailing and thought oh, I quite like the look of that so he came all the way to Cornwall to have the boat built and called her Cornubia which is an ancient name for Cornwall which is why his house in Barry is still there and in the fanlight over the front door in gold letters is Cornubia because they named their houses after their pilot cutters not the other way around. Morris was very fortunate. He sailed from Paul Ruin in June uh, 1911. And we know she paid harbour dues um, in, in Newlyn. So we know that he stopped off at Newlyn. He then picked up a ship off Land's End, bound for Barry, and shipped aboard as a pilot. So he had a job. He didn't even sail the boat home. The man in the boat did that for him. Uh, he actually had a job going home. So he started earning money straight away. Having put the pilot aboard the ship he would then get back to the cutter, they would then have to get the punt back on board but just the two of them um, and then either wait for the pilot, many of them used to go to Ilfracoom and wait for the pilot to come back in to come back down the river. Sometimes they'd go back up, sail back up the channel to uh, meet him in the port that he was bound for. Um, it was very dangerous work and they used to get drowned every now and again, you, you know, one or two of them would, 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 would be lost. I mean, they, they are um, extremely capable boats. Um, the, of course, when they were piloting, they didn't have skylights. Uh, they didn't have skylights because the seas in the Bristol Channel were such that you take heavy water on board, and a skylight was a, was a point of entry for the water. So they didn't have skylights, but as yachts or pleasure vessels, uh, they, they all have skylights in now, so um, that, is, that is sort of one difference. But they are extremely, extremely capable boats, yes. Uh, I must say, I've never felt as confident in a boat as I have in a pilot cutter. <laughs> to my mind, um, <clears throat> as Tommy Nielsen would say, if it looks right, it probably is right. But what I think you mustn't do with a boat like this is to put gear into her. I mean, for example, don't use stainless steel shackles. 
use galvanised or bronze shackles. Um, so uh, to try and keep the thing looking as original as possible. She is a working boat. She's, she was built as, as a working boat. So in the restoration, had to take that into account, I think, um, to try and make sure as far as we could that the restoration, when the boat was finished, she, if Pilot Morris came aboard, he wouldn't have too many fits about what he saw around the place. It would look more or less right to him. Apart from the skylight, uh, we could take a working in the Bristol Channel, uh, embarking pilots <coughs> and landing pilots, um, as she did 105 years ago. And I think that's, that's the important thing, that the thing could still fulfil the function for which she was designed and built. She had remarkably little weather helm. She has enough weather helm that she's just gently fighting you to get to windward all the time, which is what you want, so that the boat's doing all the work and you just lightly restrain her from trying to get too far into the wind, obviously. Um, she is exceptionally close-winded. And in a breeze of wind, um, reef down, she points just as well as she does when she's got full mainsail set. Um, we had last summer quite a bit of quite quite strong weather and we were had three or four rolls down. Most days we were out. Uh, and she pointed she, she pointed just as well uh, as she does um, you know, when, she's, when she's sailing under full mainsail. The grandchildren enjoy it. Um, plenty of mackerel fishing off Plymouth in the summer. So we've we've done some of that. Um, yeah, it, it would be it would be nice to do more. But she's she is so busy doing her charity work that um, there isn't a great deal of time to do anything else very much. She's 52 feet overall, and you draw seven foot six in the water. But if you look at the underwater shape, there's hardly any boat there at all. She's very very fine in the ends. And um, if you look back aft, uh, you can see that there's no space in the ship inside because she's got such a fine run uh, and an entry, uh, good entry for it as well. And, and it, proved, it proved to me that the, the hull, which hadn't been sailed, of course, for years and years and hadn't been raced, as far as I know, ever. I don't think Tom used to race, seriously. He was a cruising man, really, when he, when he had it, when she was the herter. So it was the first time that uh, what we thought was uh, a fast looking hull turned out to be fast in, in that way. So that was extremely rewarding. <laughs> um, yeah, she's, she's an exceptional boat.